Yes, I'm very well, thank you. Thank you very much. Got a bit of make the effort, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's my Max Max Miller suit. You know, yeah. Oh, there we go, there we go. Learn yeah. something every day. <laughs> <laughs> good. Have you seen the film? I have. Yeah, I really liked it. Oh, good. That's really great. <laughs> After, I'm really curious about the inspiration behind Stanley and Man of Variety because obviously Tim was saying that it was totally different when. It was first brought up. So yeah. how did it? What was it like originally, and how did it get from there to where it is? Well, when, when it was in a, it was a script that was sent in to me, and um, that I you know I spoke to Tim about because it was a one actor movie, and I, and I just thought that'd be interesting because I'd just seen Locke, and I thought well, that'd be quite quite mm. fun. But the thing about Tim is obviously he's a top actor, and he likes to have real depth to the character, mm. and so he just sort of read it and go, well, you know, it's quite a clever clever idea to have one actor, but really there's not enough in it for me to to do it. And I, but I was quite determined, you know, because I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> so really over about six months, because he was, he was always doing other films, mm. I kept on coming up with various ideas, and, and, then, and then suddenly, I, well, really together, we came up with the idea, well, what if it's a guy, as he is, in prison, who hallucinates because he's sort of lonely, um, and, you know, and, and they and they sort of, you know, teach him what, what, he, what he did wrong, and, uh, mm. so he can face his guilt. So it was very organic, to be fair. It wasn't just like a light bulb moment. Mm. It was over about two years we talked about it. I think so. Yeah, so you can, it's nice those ones because you can actually see them as they evolve as well when you're working yeah. on them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's right. So, do you have a particular like, like while obviously while everything was going on, do you have a particular favourite of the the personas or um, a particularly entertaining one to watch or just one that you're like? Oof. <laughs> no, well, no, I like I like all of them. I and mean, I think Igor's very funny. I mean, when we were filming Igor, everybody was in hysterics. <laughs> Um, um, so I do, I do like that one, <laughs> and also Hancock is, is very amusing. I, mean, I like all of them really. <laughs> Have you got one that you ever tried to just imitate yourself? Um, oh yeah, well Tim and I quite often do Hancock. Oh my god, what are we going to do now then? Oh bloody hell, we're going to get anywhere. So yeah, we do Hancock. <laughs> so uh, what was your favourite moment throughout the, like, just the making of it? Do you have any fond memories that stick out to you? Or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, many. I mean, because of course every day was a new character. So it was like every day is like, who are we doing? Oh, we're doing this character today, you know? So I enjoyed doing Max Miller when he was on the coffin, because obviously that was all green screen. So we mm. didn't, I sort of had an idea how it was going to turn out, but obviously you don't know until you get into post-production so that was fun um, you know I enjoyed doing Hancock in the window that was just something a bit different you know um, the magistrate Margaret Rutherford yeah that was, that was good fun um, but but it was it was quite a challenging shoot obviously for the director because obviously with him playing every role mm. um, I had to really be on my game and think about right how we're going to make this work and is the eye line correct and obviously the script was changing a lot so um, so yeah so it was all good really so Tim was saying that you actually filmed it all in just one location. It was all in the a magistrate's court. Which That's is right. A hotel. That's right. Yeah, it's now I think a Holiday Inn <laughs> or a Premier Inn. Oh, wow. so. <laughs> What's this? Oh, okay, so. What was like? Was there a particular area that you preferred filming in? Was there any part that sort of like? Oh, the cells! I love bit? the cells. I really <laughs> like the, the steady com shot when he comes out and he's going to go down to the bathroom. Yeah. I love doing that. That was great. Fun I thought film. it was brilliant as well because it's not very often you see such like a long, like a long scene falling as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're just going, oh. Yeah, no. Well, normally it's sort of like a small set, isn't it? Mm. And so you think, oh, they'll do it a few feet and then stop because it's at the end. But because we, I just wanted to use it all and to show, you know, his solid, solitary confinement. So. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. And what was this, well, like, the, the, especially around the edges, it like, all seemed to go a bit darker around the edges to add that like, sort of level of like, enclosure as well. That's right, that's right, yeah. yeah. brilliant, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was quite difficult to find, I mean, when we sort of looked in locations, we needed to find cells, and believe it or not, in London, there's, there's like, very few now, because obviously we've got working police stations but you weren't allowed in mm. there so I think it was literally you know Wimbledon or, 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 or this place in London Bridge and, and it was really because London Bridge was closer to where Tim lived because we knew <laughs> it was going to be so tiring so it was really down to his logistics while we picked that but, but then we were going to use um, different locations as well like his house for example was, was going to be like somewhere else but mm. then we just walked around and we thought well you know if we, if we dress this you know we could probably make it all work so we did. Brilliant. So it's just a bit, a bit of a, a luck of the draw there. It was, it was really, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, 
I asked this earlier, do you have a particular favourite line or a favourite scene that you found you enjoyed watching the most or that you found enjoy, you just enjoyed the most? Um, I can't think of any particular line. Um, I think the sequence with Margaret Rutherford, I, I really like that, that dialogue. So, <laughs> that is quite a quirky one to be It, it is, it is. And, and also Noel Coward, some of that was really good. Mm. You know, so. It's, like, it's, it's, it's difficult to keep up with, but when you realise it, he's like, you've actually been really quite cruel, isn't he? <laughs> oh, he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course it's himself, isn't it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So he's only talking to himself, really. Oh, it's quite clever, isn't it? Like, the, the very different ones. I think one of my favourite scenes was when you're filming from the outside and you've got the scene in the windows. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. That was just a really clever way to do it, especially because yeah. they've all got a sort of glow about them when they're, when they're walking around. That's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, at lunchtime, I would just wander around the building trying to find different areas to film <laughs> because I just thought, you know, because, you know, I wanted to make it cinematic. I didn't mm. want it to be some little TV thing. I wanted mm. to make it really, like, with the cloud sequence, I wanted it to be big. So I was going around with my like viewfinder, thinking, where can we film? Oh, that looks good. <laughs> and like the stuff in the cellar, you know, that was all just something that we, you know, made up, as it were. That wasn't in the script. And and the eagle place was always supposed to be in a, in a like a, a gothic castle. Mm. And the, and the security said, right, you can do anything in here, but you're not allowed any candles. So of course we had all the runners <laughs> at various different points, and they would right light up all the candles. So we had like 300 candles, you know. And then of course we, 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 we wrapped it and you could so smell it, you know, and the security came round, any candles? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. We definitely didn't do the one thing you said not to do. I yeah, know, exactly. But it was towards the end of the shoot, so I thought, well, if they throw us out, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, a life lesson for the future, though. If you're going to do something wrong, which Yeah, at do it end. at the end, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, great. So, what would you say was the biggest challenge and, mo and what was the biggest, what was the most challenging thing to bring from the script to the actual screen? Um, I think it was, well obviously because it's quite dialogue heavy and, mm. and, and the way that Tim and I work is he, him and I sort of focus on the dialogue together and then I'll sort of go away and do my own vision separately. So I think, I think as we said it was just about trying to make it cinematic um, and using one location, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, that's all I can say really. And obviously I was watching films like Eraserhead and The Elephant Man mm. and David Lynch movies and all sorts of <laughs> warped, you know. Disturbing stuff. Mm, nothing wrong with that. No. Some good films. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so obviously this film is supporting kids together. So could you talk about the importance of bringing light to these sorts of issues and how you feel the film's helping to do that? Well, it's interesting when we when we showed it in Ireland. Um, Tim and I did a Q&A at the end mm -hmm. and it was like literally half the audience was asking all about the comedy and the comedy heroes and because they were quite elderly and they remembered mm -hmm. a lot of these people <laughs> and then the other half were all talking about mental health you know and just saying oh you know I've got a, a relation who's got a problem or somebody's got Alzheimer's and thank you for bringing this to everybody's attention mm -hmm. you know because we purposely didn't want to say any anything specific like he's got this that or the other it's just he's got some kind of problem you know and, and he's hallucinating these characters so it was it was that that's all I can say about it really it was it was a gentle idea without being specific what was the most difficult year to film in like when you were trying to get like all the, the direction what was the most difficult year to try and maneuver and get to your specific uh, it was actually in the set in the basement when he walks through with the torch because it was extremely narrow and very damp um, and, and, it, and and the floor was uneven and it was a steady oh. camera shot so the camera people you know were pulling him back you know and, Tim obviously had the torch, nobody could see anything, and it was, yeah, it was very awkward. <laughs> and also Noel Coward was difficult, because again, he was in a very small cell, and the camera was quite low down, you know, and his dialogue was in, you know, the cell, and anyway, it was just, there was no room for the sound man, and, you know. Oh, so it was quite cramped. Yes, yeah, so it was very oh, cramped. <laughs> I do feel really awful, like, I, I, always, I, I always have, like, massive sympathy for people that are in, like, little cramped areas. <laughs> No, you can't tell, can you, when you watch it? You know. It's a fair point. It does look very open, but then sometimes you look at it and you're like, that's got to be cramped. Yeah. Or you get yeah. areas that look really cramped and it's like they're really, really massive. I know, cause just because really we're in a corner. Like yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. But no, it was a great experience, and you know, I think it was it was very demanding on well, all of us. It was demanding on Tim, obviously, particularly. Mm -hmm. But we were all really up against it because because it was a very ambitious script, you know, and to do in three and a half weeks um, it was, it was quite yeah. quite fast. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly ambitious anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it turned out well, it was really good. Good, well thank you, thank you for watching it. <laughs> Hope the audience will like it. Be better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, watched it, I watched it last night before I went to sleep and then I watched okay. it again because I was, I'd had a really long day so I wasn't quite focused <laughs> enough to gather but then I was like, right, we'll go back again. And yeah. then I watched it again today before I came over. Yeah, it's not a film you could just watch sort of generally, you have to sort of yeah, focus a little I like, bit. I like films like that though. I, I feel like a lot of people write them off because you feel like 
like films, it might be something that you're not supposed to tune into. And mm. it's like, I miss days where you actually have to pay attention to what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you miss things. And I feel like that's why, especially cult classics, they're not going to make it a big thing. Yes, yeah, it's true. It's true. So, well, when we showed it at Oxford, this woman said it's nice to see something intelligent for a change. Yeah. It's not just sort of like padding rubbish. You know, yeah, so. I'm definitely going to be getting my grand to see it. I think she'd like it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, it's alright. It was lovely chatting to you. Absolutely. Likewise. <laughs> Think, Stanley, into the abyss of your guilt. I've changed my mind. I don't want to die. I want to live. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the Fan Carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun, too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.